Hi guys, welcome. Here with us, Dr. Deep Patel, who scored an astounding rank of five in the NEET SS 2022. Let us welcome Dr. Deep. Hi, Dr. Deep. Hello, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. And it's been a pleasure uh, to have been spoken to you and to have known you before uh, this interview itself because we have spoken a lot of times before also. Yes, sir. Actually, I'm very glad to talk to you, sir. Uh, I have uh, learned many things from you, sir. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very you, much. Yes, you talk excellently. And you. we as replied a team and personally, myself, you know, like I'm really, really happy with your rank because these are some things that give us a lot of pleasure. So when a student interacts with this before and uh, the same student gets such a good rank, like, see, rank of five is not everyone's cup of tea. I feel like it's yes. an astounding rank, really. And that's why I wanted to learn from you that what is the primary preparation strategy that you followed? Sir, the primary preparation strategy was basically to see uh, the cases which I get in board. Sir, I was not uh, uh, wasting much time. in When I was in board, sir, I was in board completely, physically and mentally, sir. And when I was... Uh, doing leisure than I was doing leisure, both physically and mentally. I was not mixing both things, sir. Secondly, I followed Harrison, sir. I uh, completed, uh, I uh, completed all the subjects, all the 14 subjects, 14 or 13 subjects that were listed in the bulletin of me, as a superficially. So there was a complete, uh, there was a dilemma that should I read more of this subject, more of cardiology, more of nephrology, more of endocrinology, or should I read every subject and should I give equal importance to every subject sir. and uh, I do give equal importance to medical genetics, oncology and ID in some yes sir and so that helped me sir I think I did help. actually now it explains why your rank is very good because you have given equal importance to all the subjects that is why this time when genetics was asked as a bouncer you were still okay with it and uh, you didn't yes sir actually uh, I studied Yes, sir. I studied the basics of genetics. Uh, actually, the syndromic part of or the individual cancers also we cannot study, sir. But I studied the basics of genetics, basics of oncology, basics of how the uh, genetics works, sir. And so that helped me in cracking some of the MCQs of genetics, sir. Uh, while syndromes were very difficult, but uh, uh, basics of everything, sir, helped in me, actually. Uh, so it is very difficult while we are studying and while our peers are also preparing and Everyone is uh, reading the highest. So it's very difficult to limit that what to read and what not. So that I think this mixture of uh, this meet as the mixture of every subject is very difficult. Yeah. And so and we need to uh, decide. Uh, we need to decide uh, early also uh, that we need to be prefix that we need, should read up to this level only because uh, there is no end to every subject. Yeah. And I think there have been around eighteen to twenty questions on genetics. I think approximately. Yeah. You asked about yes. uh, even. The autosomal dominant disorders, the penetrance, yes. after about various syndromic associations. And nobody expected yes. that many questions to be genetics. And I mean, the yes. strategy of yours says like why you have been very successful so far. And that yes. is because you have given equal importance to almost all the subjects and all the yes. topics. That's why. Because I have seen people, postgraduates, who are just concentrating on one or two specialities predominantly. Because yes. they think that is their subject of interest and they leave out yes. most of the subjects. And it was quite interesting to interact uh, with you just before the interview. And yes. uh, probably your interest in internal medicine also made you do that, I think. Because there are some students, I feel, who have a lot of interest in one or two particular specialties. But you said, like, I like internal medicine as a whole. If given a chance, yes. you said that I'll be an internist. Yes, sir. Rather than being a super uh, sir, uh, he, Yes, sir. Uh, sir, I think that uh, one can not fully like one subject only. We can like, uh, well, uh, one can like... Um, some aspects of every subject. So, yeah. yeah. As a career, internal medicine is the best career, sir, I think. But uh, let's see. <laughs> no, no. Actually, there are very few students, to be honest. There are only a handful of students who I've seen who say that I like internal medicine. And whoever I've asked, like, uh, they never say, like, I like internal medicine. They say, like, I like nephrology or, like, cardiology or, like, endocrinology. They say on particular speciality or maybe two specialties for that matters. But very handful of students, like, the last time inter interviewed a candidate who liked internal medicine as such was like a couple of years ago or three years ago. After that, I've never encountered someone who say like, I like internal medicine as a whole. And on top of it, what is more heartening is you said that uh, I want to be an internist. I don't want to be a super specialist. After achieving a rank of five, and that says like yes, how much you love internal medicine and how much you like 
all the fields in internal medicine it's not just about one specialty and that is what is telling that why you got such a good rank and yeah. the current need pg yeah the current need pg pattern is in such a way that you have to know about everything you cannot leave on any subjects it's like need yeah, pg exactly. literally need pg you need to know about all 19 subjects likewise yes yeah. ss also as of now you need to know all the specialties it's not that you can concentrate extra on one specialty less on one specialty maybe within a particular specialty you can give importance to a particular topic yeah, definitely that's what is all about uh, they expect something that we know something from everything sir and we have superficial knowledge of all the topics of every subject sir. rather than going in too much detail uh, they expect what we practice in our routine medicine uh, what yeah the questions were also like i felt like around 30 40% questions were clinical and those clinical questions were also yeah. based on what you practice in day to day yes yeah, sir uh, so there were 80 to 90 clinical questions sir but they were if uh, someone has performed well in their what for three years so they were very easy there was just uh, if my reading first two lines only we can uh, guess the disease correct 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 uh, and sir there were uh, the rest 50 questions out of which uh, 10 or 10 questions were from 10 to 20 questions were from higher stuff like from superficiality level questions were there and were, then 30 questions were basically fact based sir. and more of medical genetics more of and medical. id sir they were fact based yes. okay and uh, how long did it take for you to prepare in the sense you started preparation like in a smooth and succinct way right from your first year of post graduation or you did great preparation for neat ss yes uh, actually sir i uh, started reading from my second year and uh, since second year sir uh, i used to uh, read uh, uh, means i was not in the some uh, i was not in the imp stuff but i used to read the entire textbook and i followed the and and uh, i uh, read for in second year sir i read the cases which i saw in the words and in third year, sir, I started systematically that I need to complete the whole course before my final professional examination. And, sir, after uh, examination, sir, there were three months, uh, approximately three months for me. So, after that, I uh, did MCC practice only. I didn't uh, revise the text because, sir, I, don't, uh, I didn't have much time at that time. Three to four hours were there because I joined SRG and which was slightly hectic. And... What is your primary source for MCQs? Where did you do MCQs? And uh, yes, sir, I, the MCQs helped you in the exams? Yes, sir. I followed the prep leader and uh, MCQ bank, sir. And uh, MCQ, sir, uh, doing MCQs gave us uh, more confidence than reading the text, sir. And uh, though if we think that I've read this text two to three times, but if we solve MCQ of that text, then we are bound to make mistakes, sir. And so we can eliminate our mistakes more and more by doing practicing MCQs. So I uh, recommend uh, everyone to uh, practice more MCQs than text if they are preparing after their final exam. Yeah, that's a very good point and a very valid point also. Many people start reading Harrison after completing the final year. I would say like you should have read Harrison at least once, at least the most yes. important topic. See, completing the entire Harrison, I don't think it's feasible yeah, in the place for anyone. So nobody can yes. read it line by line. At least the most important topics in Harrison, at least they should have read already during their post-graduation. And after completing their post-graduation, maybe in the six months time or three months time, whatever, they can start yes. solving the MCQs. And that is not the time where they have to read new text. Yes, very correct. Yeah. And once you solve MCQs, I think uh, that's going to give a lot of confidence. That's a trick. I keep on emphasizing on MCQs, MCQs, and MCQs. If you don't solve the MCQs, I don't think uh, yes. anyone will be able to crack the exam in the first place. Yes, true, sir. And uh, how the PRIP grant test, because uh, why I'm specifically asking this question is because so many students have said that the PRIP grant tests were very useful to them. And uh, the questions that came in the NEET SS exam were almost similar to that of what questions that have been asked in the grant test. So the mock test and the grant test how useful they were yes sir I, I used to regularly give the mock tests and sir uh, mock tests are help in uh, time management sir uh, they teach us how to manage time which mcqs to leave which mcqs we should uh, attempt confidently how to rule out sir and by doing analysis of the, those uh, tests sir, we can know that which areas we are lacking and in which areas we are strong sir. so we can uh, go through them again okay and so time management is very important and uh, by practicing grant test only we can achieve that. Having said about time management and did you find any time crunch in the exam or 
you found that the time is good no the time was good sir uh, approximately 30 minutes before the 35 minutes before the end time sir i completed my first go and uh, then i only reviewed the doubtful questions sir or the questions which i left you attempted all 150 uh, 148 Uh, actually sir there were uh, 17 questions which i left in the first go out of them 10 were doubtful and so i attempted all 10 and then there were seven questions which i don't have any idea about but uh, to be in the race i attempted the rest five and i skipped only two you skipped only two so you attempted 148 so usually yes, sir, i recommend sir everyone should attempt maximum mcqs as possible sir correct 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 generally even i say the same when the number of mcqs are less it's better to attempt as much as possible so if you are attempting yes. like 300 400 mcqs in an exam for say then probably it's okay to leave around like 10 or maybe 8 but yes and attempting only 150 in that if you leave 10 the proportion of questions that they are going to you know like uh, yes. answer is actually quite less so that is the reason why you need to be like sure that you have to attend almost all the questions yes sir because uh, rest of the mcqs that we have already ticked sir no one can get 100% out of that so we need to uh, take more mcqs so our calls will be less in purpose correct so there is a lot to learn from you actually uh, for many students and what topics you feel it's more important in the specialties you see any trend of some topics being asked regularly and repeatedly yes sir uh, some topics they are going to be asked repeatedly sir because they may be important clinically also sir and uh, by solving sir question bank we repeatedly grow to go through that topics sir but uh, probably in my point of view sir i think that uh, we should read everything because the patient will not come that uh, by the time important sir we need to treat all the patients so sir we need to read everything actually uh, once you start treating patients you will start understanding why that particular question is coming in the exam to be honest yeah yes very true and if you don't see the patients you just see the mcqs as mcqs when you start treating patients when you are on the ward side and uh, when you are doing those investigations yes you are working in casualty so that time you understand like why a particular mcq is being asked in exams in the first place because yeah, they are all very good they are basically practice that's it nothing more than that yes sir some mcq some mcq explanations are help more in towards the approach to the patient so rather than text if i read a text and approach the patient or if i read the mcq and approach the patient but some mcq text sir even help more than the text uh, text more uh, approaching the text uh, some are very useful correct correct and no, if you're going to solve like 15000 mcqs and yes. that itself is going to cover 50% of harrison easily yes very very easy. and the most important more than 50% yeah more than 50% of harrison will be covered just by solving the mcqs and there is always a rule isn't it your 80% of the questions are going to come from 20% of the topics yes very sure which are the most important one so that's what the mcqs are all about mcqs are going to concentrate those 80% areas even though they can contribute only 20 to 50% of those topics but those are the yeah. 80% of the questions that you are going to get in exams yeah no sir clinical examination textbooks sir they are the basis of uh, to start the medicine sir so clinical examination textbook must be read sir and so they will help in solving the means they will come in the theorem of uh, like means they will come in the pathway of uh, solving the clinical clues sir. like uh, if we have read the approach to sit sir then uh, we need to know what is exudative versus transudative and by that way we can solve many mcqs of sit and we can treat also patients or we can discriminate into exudative transudative so our uh, differential diagnosis will be narrowed up. by that yeah because it's a very very common question that was yeah. asked to me many times so many students when they yeah. text me they say like sir uh, they are getting outdated is it really important to read those textbooks because they are seeing those textbooks as a portal to pass their board exams only their final year exams they're And not actually sir the, those textbooks are the basis of the uh, our medicine so they are the pillars of one's medicine career sir if we have to practice those books daily and sir by practicing those books only we can build our house over the that base absolutely correct so they are the ones that are very commonly ignored yeah. and really because yes, sir one is preparing for three months after the, the final year examination then he or she may not read the clinical textbook but to start with sir first we should read the clinical textbook. okay we should have the basic knowledge of that and then only we can uh, try advance stuff okay and uh, thank you so much dr deep it's been very very wonderful to interact with you and yeah, again i'm really you. happy for one thing that you said that uh, you wanted to be an internist so i i've never seen people saying that very often 
and uh, hopefully yeah. you are a little confused between two three specialties i guess hopefully that yeah. confusions are solved soon and uh, yeah we as a preplanted team wish you all the very best for all success yeah, in your sir. and we all yeah. are very 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 happy for you thank you sir i like actually i thank you sir especially for teaching me good stuff sir and also the entire plethora team that to provide me such a good platform to crack them thank, thank you, you so much we are really happy and proud dr deep thank you so much and have a nice day see you yeah thank you